So I took an idea from the never ending onions video and thought, wouldn't it be nice if you could actually garden in that same manner? And that you'd only have to plant something one time. And I decided it would be an interesting challenge to produce a garden that would come back every year all on its own. So that's what I'm setting out to do in this video. Uh, the plants that I'm using are the sunchoke, which produces a tuber much like a potato. Of course, the never-ending green onions. I'm also going to be using the scarlet runner bean and the Malabar spinach to help protect the uh, dirt from the sun because here in Texas it gets pretty hot I'm gonna plant two zuc or one zucchini and one yellow squash plant in here just to help shade the ground the, the sun choke actually grows to about 12 feet tall so I'm actually going to use it as the stakes for my two tomato plants that are going in here and yes I know the tomato plants will die off at the first frost but I've kind of got plans for that too as in building a small greenhouse over top of this 5x5 five five box. So then everything that I'm going to be putting in this little garden today, except for the tomatoes, the squash and the zucchini are actually perennials. Um, even the scarlet runner beans uh, will come back a year after year and never have to be planted again. But at the same time I can just add the two tomato plants to the setup and uh, the system will be back up and going. The key to this whole thing is that I'm actually going to use the sun chokes to stake the tomatoes up instead of putting cages around the tomatoes. What I'm going to use uh, to hold the tomato plants to the stakes are the scarlet runner beans. They're actually a pole bean and they grow up, up the pole which so they will grow up the tomato plant first and then transfer once they reach the height of the tomato plant over to the pole beans which should hold the entire system together hence not needing a cage for the tomatoes I uh, believe I've seen things like that but they call them the three sisters and yeah, there's a couple more sisters involved in this one but we're going to give it a shot Okay, so this is the setup. These are the sun chokes, and they're around the tomato plant. Around the base of the tomato plant, I've planted the scarlet running beans. They're going to grow up the tomato plant, and then when they reach the top of the tomato plant, transfer over to the uh, sun chokes. And as you can see, I'm adding onions to this one too. Can never have too many green onions. So this is Mackenzie. She's actually my great niece and she's helping me with this project. Say hi, Mackenzie. Hi. <laughs> so we've actually got this all together now. And what we've got, like I said, are the sun chokes down there on the four corners of the tomato plant. Planted directly around the tomato plant is eight scarlet runner beans or eight scarlet pole beans and what they will do is grow up the tomato and then transfer over to the sun choke which are going to outgrow that tomato in a matter of a couple days Despite in the center I have planted four more scarlet or I'm sorry four more sun chokes yeah. and around them I've planted Malabar spinach which is a vining spinach that loves any temperature above 90 degrees that's the problem I have here. My spinach will bolt after 80 degrees. Well, that's the majority of the year here in Texas. So each one of the sunchokes have three Malabar vines on, or four Malabar vines on them. And then again, we have the same thing with the tomato. I'd like to eventually have this filled with plants that will come back every year. These are the only perennials that I've found 
And again, the tomato plant's not a perennial. I don't think it'll die off though until it actually gets hit with frost or a freeze. So if I can protect that with uh, keeping plastic over it when we actually do, actually do have a freeze here, which is probably 10, maybe 15 days out of the year, then I believe I can keep most of this alive. So at this point, I have a recommendation. If you've got a retreat or a bug out location, and you've got the time and inclination, uh, I'd highly recommend because these plants do so well and produce food that you look at the sun choke, the scarlet runner bean, and of course the green onions and go out and plant them in an area on your retreat. They produce food, the sun choke, um, again you treat it like a potato, uh, dig it up in the early spring. Uh, the scarlet runner bean produces a bean much like a pinto bean that you put in a slow cooker uh, and cook up with ham. Uh, the tuber that uh, is the root structure for the scarlet runner bean is actually edible also. And the onions, they just never die. So, again, I'd, I'd, I'd recommend it if you've got a retreat or a bug out location because it's not a plant you've got to watch after. It'll just continue to multiply and grow. Uh, the tubers look a lot like ginger and will just spread over time. So I'm going to wrap this video up now. And uh, y'all go ahead and rate this video, subscribe. Here in about two weeks, I'll put up uh, another video showing you where we're at. Maybe I'll even wait a month so that everything's actually filled in and you can see what the entire little process is supposed to come together and do. Y'all take care and have a nice day.